everyone, welcome to another video with iLearn Engineering. My name is Leslie. Uh, today we're going to talk about scheduling. Um, and it, it's not it's not scheduling and, and scheduling your classes or your diary, but it's something kind of similar. Um, so whenever we use a computer, we run lots of different programs on it at the same time. Um, so obviously you're, you're watching this, um, you could be watching it through a web browser or something like that. Um, you maybe are doing some some skill assignments or, or something like that at the same time. You could be playing a game, you could be sending emails, you could be doing all sorts of things. And to us, they seem uh, seamless. It seems like it's all happening at exactly the same time, which, you know, it's not. Um, they're just happening so fast that to, to our human brain, it seems, it seems like it's all, you know, synchronous. Um, but we have something called a scheduler. And what it does is it assigns resources to perform these different tasks that we're asking the computer to do. The resources could be um, processors inside the CPU and things like that. It could be um, network time. It could be um, if we're using the same, you know, you have a couple of things displaying on the monitor at the same time. Both programs need to have have time with the monitor um, and they use the, the, you know, the video card or the graphics card. It could be data flowing through the system, could be access to memory, all those types of things. They're all the different processes that we're asking the machine to do. And the scheduler then assigns the resources to the different tasks as we go. Um, I'll just write some stuff down for you guys. Um, text. So we have a scheduler and it assigns those tasks. Um, it assigns the kind of resources and the, the, the time to each, each thing. Um, so we've got the scheduler, it, it does the hard work, um, and it's used to balance the load on a system. So what we mean by that is we want all of the different applications and, and processes and things like that, that are using the system to get the tasks fairly to get the time for their tasks fairly sorry so we want the system to be efficient but we want it to be fair as well so we don't want one um resource being being hogged by something um so say you were trying to watch this video on one side of your monitor or on one monitor and you have something else on the other one um you don't want one application getting the monitor and the, the other one doesn't get a look in basically um so there's different types of scheduling that we can have. Um, one is CPU scheduling. So we know that the CPU, the central processing unit, is the brain of the computer. Um, it it ensures that the computer does you know all the different things that we need to do, and it's used a lot. Obviously, a lot of a lot of um applications need to use it, and. It, the CPU scheduling basically allows one resource to use the CPU um, while another process is waiting for, say, an input or output device or something like that. So if you think of it in um, quite high level terms, so we're using a web browser right now um, to watch this video and the web browser is using the CPU to, to, to get the, the video, to load it up, to show it on the screen. All that kind of thing. So say the, the video is waiting for the network, you know, so your internet to bring in a part of the video. The CPU shouldn't sit there and wait for that to happen. And another program maybe needs some time. Um, so it, it allows our task for the browser window to pause. And something else can make use of the CPU while the browser is waiting for something from the network. So it kind of schedules out those those CPU resources and make sure that it's as fair as it can be and the CPU is not getting hogged. Um, we also have something called preemptive scheduling um, and what that is is that it gives the CPU a specific time um, it give, you know so each each process needs CPU time it gives it that specific time and it says I know that you're going to need this. We're going to interrupt other things and you get the time. Um, so that could be like a high priority process that arrives. Um, and, you know, they don't, they kind of need to go first, if you like. So they jump the queue of all of the other, the other processes. If you think of the processes, we're all standing 
in a queue, say, in a, as if it's in a shop, right? We're waiting to get to the front and buy our CPU time and something comes in and it's high priority, it jumps to the front of the queue and it takes over, um, which is fine if it's high priority, you know, that, that needs to happen sometimes. But if there's a lot of high priority processes that arrive often, the lower priority processes then are neglected, um, which can be a downside of it. Um, we also have a type of scheduling called round robin scheduling. Um, it's the most basic kind of scheduler. So we have a queue, if you imagine a queue, like the queue in a shop and jobs are added to the end of the queue um, and each each job gets its time. Um, so just for like this is obviously um, very, very high level and the CPU works a lot faster than we do. But say each each process gets 10 seconds. So process one comes along, it's the web browser and it gets its, its 10 seconds. And then behind it in the queue is say Microsoft Word, you're doing some, some skill work and it gets in its 10 seconds. And then behind that we have the music that you're playing, you know, the application that you're playing music through and it gets in its 10 seconds and so on and so forth. And once a, <clears throat> excuse me, once a process have got their 10 seconds, they go back around and join the end of the queue again. And they wait in the queue and when they get to the front, they get their next 10 seconds and, and so on. Um, so each one gets the same, the same kind of time, if you like. Each one gets the same time slice um, and we, we just wait our turn, basically. Um, obviously, they don't get 10 seconds at a time. That's, um, that's more for our, our brain's understanding. Like CPUs work a lot faster than that. Um, but this is the most uh, the most basic get the most basic scheduler if you like I can nearly speak. Um, the next one we have then is a first come first served. Or you'll see it written like that as F F C F S. Um, so jobs are added to the queue similar to they would be in a round robin, but they're basically completed in the order that they come in. So whatever process gets there first, it gets completed. And then the next process gets gets time um, and it gets completed and then the next process takes time. And um, what happens there is that each process is completed kind of in full or in full at that point. They may need time in the future, but um, it's not like a round robin where we have the queue, but everybody gets like a little slice in turn. And so we're all completing our jobs at, at, you know, at kind of the same time with this one. A job comes along and their, their thing is completed in full. And then the next one comes along and theirs is completed in full. And then the next one and so on and so forth. So it's easy to set up and manage that kind of scheduler. But there can be delays, obviously, then um, if you're at the back of the queue and you're waiting for the people at the front of the queue to have their stuff finished first then um you know your task might need to wait quite a long time for that um so we have that and then we also have something called a medium term scheduler and a medium term scheduler will move processes out of memory to prioritize others so say a process is blocked for resources um similar to a preemptive type of scheduling it's um but it's not looking into the future. It's saying, okay, you're blocked right now, so I'm gonna move you aside and I'm gonna get the next um the next you know person in and they get their time while you're waiting on your resource. Um they can also move processes aside if we have like a low priority um process but a higher priority one is there. So we'll just move that one aside and say, you have to wait, this guy's getting his turn now instead. Um, and it can also do that if a process is using too much memory and, you know, sometimes that happens because the process is, is kind of, um, not doing what it should do properly. Um, that's a whole, that's a whole kind of video in and of itself, but there, there may be reasons why a process is using too much memory and the medium term scheduler will say, that's enough. You're going to have to move aside. You're using way too much memory. Other people need their go now. Um, so that's the medium term scheduler. And then the last one that we have is a task 
scheduler. Um, and it allocates virtual machines to meet um, user requests. So it will consider different parameters, different constraints. Um, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll assign things in the way that it, it feels is most appropriate depending on what else is going on. Um, and the goal is to optimize resource utilization. Um, they want to like minimize the process in time. So they want to minimize time where people are waiting or processes are waiting for things to happen. Um, so that the, it'll kind of analyze those virtual machines and, and, and get everything flowing as smoothly as it can do. Um, so that's, that's scheduling in a nutshell. Um, there are a lot more details for those different types of of schedules um and and schedulers and you can dive as deep into them as you want to um but for for what we're talking about it's it's um you know that's enough detail there um hopefully you've learned something and you know i know what what a scheduler is and and what they do and the different types of scheduling so hopefully you've enjoyed that video and i'll see you again soon on future videos bye